Hi, I'm Mark Fulton with Sister Customer Success. This is the second of a five-part series of videos on alerting in Sister Monitor. This time, we'll be looking at how to create alerts from panels. The most simple and practical method of creating an alert is from a dashboard panel or metric where many of the required fields of an alert will be completed for you. This way, no prior knowledge of the metric name or segmentation are required as these are already defined in context of the dashboard panel. Let's take a look at some options to do that here. We can either do that from the explore view or if we already have a dashboard configured with the dashboard panel that we want to use as a basis for the alert, we can use that too. In Explore, the first step is going to be to define the area of the environment that you want to create the alert for. So essentially, looking at either the physical view of containerized apps or hosts or containers, or the service-orientated view with the groupings from your container platform. Let's pick an example Java app here, and then let's say that we want to um, select one of the built-in dashboards to see what we have available um, to use for our alert. Once we've chosen a dashboard, and you may want to refer to the initial video series on dashboards to get an idea of how these work, it's just a case of looking at the panels and seeing, okay, what could be something that we want to define an alert on in our environment. Here we have a panel which shows top pods for this particular example Java app namespace that we've chosen and it's showing us the memory usage in those pods. This is a good example for us to define an alert if we want to set a threshold whereby a pod does not exceed or exceeds um, a given range of memory usage here. And you can see the requirements of the alert itself already predefined. So all we need to do is name the alert. Something logical where it's easy to identify and make sense in accordance to the metric and the scope. And now you can see that the other thing we need to set is the trigger. So the scope is already defined for us and the metric is also already defined. So the key benefit here is that we don't need any prior knowledge of the metric name or we don't need to browse through the metrics. And also um, because in Explore we've already selected the relevant scope, we don't need to do that here either. So now we need to really make a decision on what we want this trigger to be. And this is always going to be, you know, a custom sort of piece where we need to understand, well, what constitutes in this example high memory usage on a pod in the namespace? The preview window lets you sort of make a decision um, on that by giving you some historic data that you can use for context, okay? So you can see on the y-axis here, we have a, a scale um, of, memory, of memory usage range. Let's say I want to define this at 900 megabytes. You can see that the preview window gets automatically updated when you enter a value in there. And so this means that this particular pod, this Cassandra pod that is exceeding the 900 me megabyte threshold, if it exceeds it for more than 10 minutes, then we're going to get an alert. Likewise, the segmentation here is already defined in the dashboard panel, so we don't need to worry about that. But of course, if we wanted to adjust it, we could set it to, for example, the container name, the host name, um, anything like that, that that could make sense. Moving forward, we would define our notification channels and choose if we want to activate a Sysdig capture file. We'll talk more about notification channels and captures in a later video. So a further method that we can also use to create dashboards from dashboard panels is from the dashboards functionality within Sysdig Monitor itself by looking at dashboards that have already been created. Let's look at this overview dashboard. Um, we can see um, a straightforward method to create a dashboard based on this CPU utilization panel. 
Again, here in the breadcrumbs, we, on the top right corner of the panel, we see a create alert option. And this will function in exactly the same manner that we looked at before, um, whereby you will need to check um, the trigger that you're specifying there, double check the segmentation and scope that they make sense, give it a title, and set the severity level of the alert in order for it to be created. So a quick recap here. From both the Explore and the Dashboard features of Cystic Monitor, you have powerful options available to easily create or define alerts, whereby you need no prior knowledge of the metric name and the scope since that will be defined for you in the Dashboard panel. Next time we'll be looking at creating alerts from an event. Please join us for that video.